I'm Destin Harrison, and you're listening to the Gig Salad Green Room Interviews. The Pointer Sisters have been making waves in the music industry since 1973. Since then, they've won three Grammys, had more than a dozen top 20 singles, and they even have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today, we're joined by Ruth Pointer, a truly legendary entertainer with an amazing story to tell. So we are here with the one and only Ruth Pointer of the Pointer Sisters, and I have a lot of things that I want to talk about. But first, Ruth, can you just tell us your story? Oh, wow. My story is uh, I was born and and grew up in Oakland, California. Um, My parents were both ministers, and so it was a very uh, strict and religious childhood. And uh, I have three sisters younger than me, two brothers older than me. And um wasn't really uh sure about my you know, which way my life was gonna go. Um um I don't I mean, it's just kind of a typical childhood, you know, fighting and, and, and uh going to church with my siblings and uh just kind of like following along with with what my parents were teaching but not really understanding what it was all about you know um i got into some things that i'm not really proud of like drugs and alcohol later on in life i had uh two children uh by the time i was 19 years old um and wasn't sure of how to parent them and uh My life took a turn when my sisters asked me to join the group uh, in 1973 and uh, not even really thinking of what that meant or where it would take me. I was just happy to be doing something that I liked to do, which was singing and um, being able to make a living doing that. And unbeknownst to me and surprisingly so, it took off and, and Took me into a, a stratosphere that I could have never imagined, and uh, for the past forty years, I've been performing all over the world with my sisters. And uh, recently, since I've lost my baby sister June, and in 1976, my sister Bonnie decided to go her own way and have a solo career. Uh, My sister Anita has been on medical leave in the last uh, year, and so I'm singing with my daughter and my granddaughter, which is amazing and crazy and fun and wonderful, and I'm so happy to have them by my side. And I've written a book in February uh, about my own life, uh, living this crazy life uh, in the entertainment business and what my ups and downs have been and the challenges that it, that it's brought me and the redemption from those challenges and um my life now with my current husband I've been through a few and um probably happier than I've ever been in my life living in Massachusetts and still traveling the world at the age of 70 so there you have it <laughs> It's such a cool story, too. And I want to talk about the book a little bit more because it's it's such an amazing story that you have to tell with, you know, you've gone from 1973 to 1985. You guys had 13 top 20 hits, won three Grammys, and now you're performing with your daughter and your granddaughter. And you must be just so proud of that. That's such an awesome story to tell. I am. I am proud of it because I could have never imagined. Um, I remember me and my sister having a conversation when Bruce Springsteen turned 40 and and it was such a big deal and and when the Rolling Stones uh Mick Jagger had started getting up in age and everybody was like wow and he's still out there and I was, I remember having a conversation with my sister thinking oh my god you can make all kinds of predictions in your life especially when you're young and I have 23 year old twins right now um I have five children, and these are my youngest. And I hear them saying things that they will and won't do, and I look at them and I go, you know, as the old saying goes, never say never, you know, because you really don't know the twists and turns that life can take you through and can change everything in your life. And that's kind of what's happened with my life. Um, 
I've learned to kind of roll with the punches and try not to make too many predictions about what I will and won't do. And, uh, I mean, I do have boundaries, and there are some things I won't do anymore. Uh, but I, I do try to um, go along with the process of life a little easier than I, than I did when I was younger and accept things the way they come as best I can without hurting myself. What do you think you would have done if you didn't start a career in music? What do you think your life would have looked like then? Um, you know, I've always loved fashion. And I had already uh, put in applications to the uh, uh, the Fashion Institute in New York City so that I could study uh, fashion and um marketing and anything that had to do with traveling and, and fashion, I was always interested in and still am. Uh, if I'm home for a certain amount of time, I go to the bookstore and buy fashion magazines and I'm always interested in what's coming up. I, I love um, and work with our stylists as far as what we're going to wear on stage. And it's, I don't know, I just, um, that would be probably where my interest would have gone. You know, that's so cool. And if if anybody hasn't seen a Pointer Sisters show, you guys have some of the most amazing costumes. You come out on stage and you have everything from like these sequin dresses and even just when you're in like jeans and high heels and a really nice white shirt. And they're such good costumes. That's like half the fun of the show is just seeing what you guys are going to wear because it's always phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. We we, we enjoy it. And, and my my granddaughter and my daughter, uh, you know, they love fashion too. And so we collaborate together and, and make that decision along with our stylist, Cecile Parker, who's worked with many, many, many people. So what's that dynamic like, trying to work with family all the time? Has that been difficult for you? You know, it does have its ups and downs because uh, unlike working with a person that's not related to you, 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 you dig, it tugs at your heartstrings a little more, you know? Mm -hmm. You care a little bit. Um, I find even as I'm getting older and, and, and still out there, um, there are certain things that um, decisions, I had to make a decision just recently that uh, I tried not to make, uh, it was a particular engagement, I won't name it, but it was a particular engagement that is really, really difficult. And uh, we've been doing it for years, and every time we would do it, we would say, oh, my God, this is so hard. I never want to do this again. But the people love us, and they keep asking us to come back. And so they asked us, and I remember doing it last year, and I said to myself, and I said to my daughter and my granddaughter, who were with me at that time, I said, this is the last time I'm doing this. Just let you know, I don't want to do this again. And so it came up again, and I was telling my husband and my manager, I said, I don't want to do this. I, I, I don't want to do this, so don't ask me to do it. And uh, they kept saying, you know, but these people, they pay real good and they just love you guys and they're leaving that slot open in case you change your mind. And I said, no, I'm not changing my mind. I don't want to do this. And, of course, then the, the issue comes up, you know, your daughter and your granddaughter and the band and your crew are also other considerations. They want the work. They want the work. And that was probably one of my most uh, defining decision-making making moments was that it's not just about me. You know, there are other people that I have to be concerned about. And many times I make my decisions uh, about engagements and, and things that I do because it's not just about me. So what do you see happening in the next 30, 40, 50 years for your daughter and your granddaughter and this continuing legacy of the Pointer Sisters? I'm not sure. You know, it, it, it's kind of exciting not to really know. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, my granddaughter particularly, and my daughter too, uh, Issa and Sadako, um, they're so creative and um there's so much fun, and uh, you know, my granddaughter, my, gra my my daughter Issa has my only grandson, 
57 years old. He's autistic, um, you know, and he's 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 so excited about you know things that norm, normal people aren't excited about. And and I love watching his growth, and and I want to be able to make it possible for my daughter to, you know, do things that he needs. Um, and my granddaughter just had my first great grandson, who's one year old. Oh my gosh! I know, I know. Isn't that amazing? And my daughter and, and my granddaughter both say to me sometimes when they see me getting a little weary uh, about the travel and, and different things, um, they say, "Well, my my granddaughter calls me Nana. Of course, my daughter calls me Mom. Mom, you know, Nana. We only do this." For you, so whenever you wanna pack it in, just let us know. Give us a little time because we don't want to do this with anyone else but you. So as long as you're out here, we got you. Oh, it 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 really touches me for them to, you know, for them to want to support me that way. I love it so much. I would do anything for them. You're listening to the Gig Salad Green Room interviews. If you're planning an event, whether it's a holiday party, a wedding ceremony, or an anniversary, Gig Salad is your one-stop shop for all of your entertainment needs. Just go to gigsalad.com to find out how we can help you book something awesome. Is there anything that you have left in your career that you still just absolutely have to do? You know, there's one little thing... (laughs) But it's not mandatory. Uh, I have always, uh, well, I can't say always, but I I would like to do some kind of uh, solo musical um, project. Um, I had started a project a few years ago when me and 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 my sister Anita and, and June were still working together, and I had started a solo project and collected some material from several different writers and 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 musicians. And uh, then the last Pointer Sister album project came up, and we needed one more song for that album, uh, Only Sisters Can Do That. And I was pregnant with the twins at the time. And and um, I, I had this one song that was, was I felt was really strong, and so uh, I gave up my song for the Pointer Sisters' last album called Don't Walk Away. But I since have still I still have the copy that I did solo, and I have a bag of tapes of of music that I I recorded with some incredible Nashville musicians and and you know that would probably be something that would be um, you know I I guess like a bucket list thing you know something I would like to do I'd like to finish that project at some point. That's so cool. We'll be looking out for that. I would love to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every now and I, you know, I haven't hadn't heard the songs in a long, long time. And all of a sudden, after when I wrote my book, uh, the issue came up, and um, because at first they were going to try to coincide a book with the musical project and have them out together and all that kind of stuff, but we just didn't work it out. But I pulled out those tapes and listened to those songs, and I thought, "Wow, these are really good songs. Why don't I, you know? Why don't I, you know?" But if the opportunity comes up, I would love to finish that project. I've heard you say in another interview too that you're a big fan of Kanye. Is that right? Yeah, I love Kanye's music. I really do. Would you ever consider doing a collaboration with him? Heck yeah! <laughs> I would love doing that. I mean, I, I. Wow, that would be amazing, I think. With my voice and his lyrics and his production and I would that would be interesting. Oh my gosh, it would blow my mind. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah. Well here's hoping. You never know. You never know. You never know. Never say never. So as we wrap up here, is there any advice that you can give for people who are trying to make it to the point where you are right now in the entertainment industry, somebody who's just starting their career as a singer or as any other kind of performer, um, any advice that you can give for them on how to make it as a performer? Um, The only thing I can, you know, 
say is, is, is pay attention. Pay attention to your business, the fine print. Have people around you that really care about you if you can and not people that are just trying to get what they can out of you. Um, you know, just keep yourself grounded and keep yourself healthy, you know, physically. You know, try not to get swept up in the fame and the media of all that. Uh, I was reminded about that recently, uh, speaking about Kanye, I, I, you know, this whole thing that just happened with his wife, bless her heart, Kim Kardashian, being robbed. And I, and I had to look at that and go, wow, that's what fame will do to you, you know. That kind of fame, you know, that Michael Jackson kind of fame, you know, that just everybody wants a piece of you, you know. And I, I, I mean, I think that a lot of it is, 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 uh, enjoyable, I'm sure, to have that kind of love and attention from, from the world. But a lot of it is very scary, you know. Um, I, um, you know, I just, I just know that, that, you can't really trust everybody, and that's too bad, you know, but uh, that's what I would advise people to just be careful about who you surround yourself with. Keep yourself healthy. Keep your mind sharp, whatever you need to do, whether it's uh, uh, some kind of a religion or some kind of project or some kind of program or something that can keep you grounded, you know. I need structure in my life. I tried it the other way where I just sort of flew by the seat of my pants and it took me to some real scary and dangerous places and I had to come sort of fold it all back as I write about in my book to um, some structure in my life of things that I do on a daily basis, one of them mainly being prayer and uh, trying to stay connected to something that I feel like is bigger than me, whether I want to believe it all together or not, whatever it is. I love watching inspirational people and programs like um, Own Station, Ian Levan Sant, T.D. Jakes, Tim Story, Joel Olson. Uh, these people speak to my soul. And um, so I, I feel like the inspiration from all those places plays a big part in my life. Fantastic. Absolutely. Ruth Pointer, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, just, uh, you know, buy the book and uh, enjoy Pointer Sister Music as often as you can. Ruth Pointer's book, Still So Excited, is available now at Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com. And be sure to look up thepointersisters.com to see if they're going to be performing in a city near you. Go see them if you get the chance. It's a really great show. And as always, be sure to visit gigsalad.com to find out how we can help you book something awesome. For everyone here in the Gig Salad Green Room, I'm Destin Harrison. Thanks for listening.